Welcome to this look at the new Covenant and Vicon Equipment Pack DLC on Farming Simulator 19, Part 1, with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's June the 16th. Today sees the release of the Covenant and Vicon Equipment Pack DLC. This is a paid DLC unless you have the Seasons Pass. If you have the Seasons Pass, then it is free. Um, as far as... Um, times around the world when this will be released it tends to vary um, and I personally didn't have any problems I've got season pass I went straight onto the PlayStation Store um, clicked on it it said free downloaded it how easy you're gonna find that I don't know once it was then in the mod hub I didn't then have to go and click on it to install it it was pre-installed once it had downloaded so I didn't have any problems from that aspect either again that's not so you won't um, but that's how I found it now I'm gonna split this DLC review and like I would do any mod review I'm gonna but then I'm gonna split this down into probably three maybe four parts there's a lot of equipment in this pack and I want to break it up into first field prep which is going to be this video then I'm going to look at seeding and planting then I'm going to look at probably all the mowing setup stuff um, and grass work and then probably the baling although to be fair maybe baling and bailey baler wrapping is, is what i'm going to try and do or i might put the baler and baler wrapping all in with the mowing equipment so it will only be in three parts but that's the plan for this pack um as i often do with these things a little bit of information just to throw into the mix here there's quite a bit of stuff in this pack as i've already said there's some really nice things that whilst you might look and think okay well we've got all this equipment already in game there are some nice features some surprises and some of the bits of equipment here um, and I'm going to put this out there now as far as I'm aware it's 14.99 I think that's standard across the board I think that's euros pounds and dollars is it worth 14.99 that is a personal preference it depends what you personally want to get out of it what you think you'll get out of it can I suggest whether it's worth buying it? For me personally, I'm a YouTuber. I mean, I've got the season pass, so technically I got it for free, although I kind of suppose I paid up in advance. Um, I would download the stuff anyway to give me a varied assortments of equipment to use on my Let's Plays, plus to do the, the reviews like this, I would pay for it anyway. Um, it depends whether there's anything in this these videos that you see and think, you know what, I absolutely have to have that. Um, do I think it's a little bit expensive? I do, a little bit. That's my own personal preference, my own personal opinion and feeling, but it is what it is. Um, so, anyway, um, the two companies, Kvernland, um Ole Gabriel Kvernland is Norwegian uh, and comes from Kvernland, I think is where it comes from, started off making um, scythes in a forge in 1879 was where the Kvernland company started out. It went from strength to strength, moved on and on, they bought up various different companies, it then became the Kvernland Group, a much bigger company. The other side of it, you've got Vicon, or Vicon as they refer to it, one of their, their guys when they did uh, the video for this with Giants, said at the plant in Norway, they say Vicon, however you want to say it. It's up to you. It was started by Hermanus Vissers in 1910 in Holland. Um, I think it was during the First World War. Anyway, one of these company employees... Now, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to murder this, but Vissers Construction, Neuven Venep, I think is... I think it's where the plant was, um, is, the, is the phrase. You split that down, it gives you Vicon. Vissers Construction, Nova Venep. Um... Vicon. The two companies merged in 1998 when the Kvernland Group acquires a company called Greenland and Vicon together. Um, they do operate as separate companies but all come under the, the Kvernland Group kind of banner. Um, so that's what I throw that in there. I often do, just gives you a bit of information behind it. So let's start off with our field prep. Um, in front of us we have got this. Um, this is the Kvernland 2500SI Plough. Um, because I'm doing this on console, I know a lot of YouTubers have already reviewed this, they've got early access. I did get early access on PC, but as I said before, I do the console stuff. Um, I will be talking about the slot counts if you're on PC, that won't be relevant to you. Um, but it just gives you an idea of what the slots are going to be for this, you know, 
people ask they want to know that's what i'm saying for this will use seven slots this plow and this has got a nice little trick up its sleeve it's in it, it, the whole pack i'm going to put this out there now rather than go around each one and go it's nicely detailed because i often do when i'm doing mod reviews they are all incredibly well detailed i mean the the level of i mean it's just incredible on these um but yeah, th this you can have as an individual plow, or you can have it with this section on here, this cultivator section. Um, there's a whole range of stuff now that has the eye on it. So when I said 2500 um, eye plow, it's to do with in cab and the connections and s operating systems. Cavern and uh, have got this whole range of eye stuff now. It's to do with the ISO bus controls, the universal um, hookup system and intelligent systems with all the various different terminals and things like that it's just their range of those products so everything talks to it to each other and it makes operation for the operator farmer whoever it might be in the cab far easier everything can be controlled from one place so all the i stuff is it's all kind of interlinked um so you can put all the various different things in that range onto the tractor using the same terminals and equipment and the whole thing all kind of links together a uh, very clever system uh, so you'll find this under plows there we go 2500 si plow 36 grand to buy 2.5 meter plow um, it requires 165 horsepower to pull now you can have it standard as a plow like so or you can add the packer mat for 8000 on top which takes up to 44 grand um, there are no other options available a lot of the stuff on here there aren't many options available, if any. Some you've got the, the option to switch over to Vicon or Kvernon, but we'll get onto those later on. Um, I apologise for the chat at the start now. I know people say to me, don't, you know, don't have to apologise. Um, there won't be all that chat at the start of parts two and three, and because I've done all of that now. Um, so, what we're going to do... Jump in and hook it up. Now, what I'm going to do is open the help window because that's just far easier to show you as well you can have a look and see what that now i'm playing on playstation 4 pro um but controls will be slightly different for xbox but you know it will do the same thing so i'm going to come over here to a fresh bit of ground now what we can do for transport is fold this so if i go l1 and x we fold the whole system up That folds away, that drops down, and we are in transport mode, so we can get wherever we're going to go, no problem at all. Very lovely. So what we'll do is unfold the plow. Now, as I said before, you don't have to have the packer. You can just have the plow. And what you can do with any... well... <coughs> The ploughs like these that are attached on the three-point link, a lot of them, you can turn them over. If you go down the field one way, with the leading edge of your plough, the first furrow being right up against the tractor, when you come back down the field, you flip it over and you come back down the other way. That's, generally speaking, how a mould board plough works. Um, now, with this, if you don't want to have the packer, you don't have to have it, but if you have got it but don't want to use it, we can deactivate the packer. So if I now do L1 and up on my D-pad, it puts the packer up and out the way. So what I can do now is just plough. Um, if I want to allow create fields, L1 and triangle, I now drop this down, and I plough. My leading edge of my plough is right by the tractor, and off I go. Happy days and all that. When I get to the end of the field, I lift it up, and I can turn the whole system over, so I turn plough, L1 and square. What I love is the whole packer thing. Every, all the animation on it is incredible. It's so well done. And then it puts the packer away again. So that when I've turned round... I mean, to be fair, I would come down this way again. So it would be this side I would be coming, coming round. Because then my leading edge of my plough is up against the furrow that I just did. Where I finished off and I carry on again. All very nice. Operates like a normal plough. Fantastic. But what you can do with it... And again, the thing is, this is a more this is a, this is an immersion thing because in game you can seed uh, with a direct drill without the need to plough or cultivate. You can seed directly onto a ploughed field. You can seed directly onto a cultivated field. The preparation of a seed bed 
ploughing turns it all over, gets all the residue back under. A lot of people don't do that anymore. They don't do no till or very little till. Um, and then cultivating on top of that levels out the seed bed ready for planting. Now, obviously, or seeding, but obviously in game you don't have to do that. This is just one of those things that you can do to, to add to that bit of realism to it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, activate the packer. So I'm going to open that out. Now, I don't need it on the first pass, to be fair. So I could deactivate it now, but what I'll do is drop that down. And we'll go along. Now, as you can see, the packer is rolling next to me. On the first pass... Oh, so I probably shouldn't have activated on the first pass. There probably was a knock point. So when I get to the end, I lift it. And this is great as well. If I turn my plough now, the packer moves over with it. Like it did before, but it's still in its activated position. So I think it's absolutely yeah. And what I would do... I swung around completely the wrong way there. But so what happens now is, I go for my next pass. As I plough, I cultivate over the bit I just ploughed. So I drop that down. And as I plough out the next bit, I cultivate the bit I just did. So I'm preparing my seed bed all in one pass. Now it's not a very wide plough. Obviously, you know, if, if people are doing that, you know, I've got a massive field and I want to do it as quickly as possible, then maybe this is not going to be the system for you. Lift the plough, turn the plough, and it rotates over. I'm down for my next pass. And away we go again. It's a cool feature. Oh, I think I'm bumping over some of the high bits here. The cultivating section does extend a little bit further than the outside edge of the packer, which is nice because it means as long as you're close enough in when you do your next bit of ploughing, you don't really miss anything, which makes life a little bit easier as well. Uh, but that's cool. I like that. That's really nice. The 2500 SI plough from Covenant. Uh, will it let me hook? It will. Oh, hell. I need to turn it first. I need to limit to field so I don't do that again. Now I can pack it away, but to actually drop it off the back it has to be unfolded like so, and it has to be turned that direction. So okay, moving on to the next of our mods, in part one. Is this the Cavernland Enduro Pro 5000F Cultivator? I may well need a front weight for this. This is a three point... This is a three point link mounted mounted five meter cultivator this will use six slots it cultivates the ground again this you know as far as the cultivator goes it doesn't do anything different to any other cultivator it's just the cavern and version with their design and part of the pack you know it does it in a five meter kind of way this you will find under cultivators there you go, the Enduro Pro 5000F, 37,500, requires 240 horsepower to operate, 5 metres. It does say a, a weight of 1,600 kilograms will be, kind of be where you need to be. Um, no options available, you get what you get, and this will cultivate at 9 miles per hour. This tractor's fairly heavy. On a smaller tractor, you're going to need something on there. So, we open it up. As you would expect, nice smooth animation, all locks into place, drop it down, and away we go. So the front, we've got our coulters, chisels, there's various different ways they're referred to, um, which do your initial seed bed prep, then you've got your wheels and you've got a packer roller on the back, so your wheels, your kind of discs, um, for breaking up, up clumps and things and getting it all nicely levelled, and then your packer roller at the back does its job and it cultivates at five metres. Um, at six slots, it's not too horrendous on the slot count. It may well be that Cavernland is the uh, the company that you prefer, and that's why you'll be wanting one of these. Like I say, it doesn't do anything different to any other cultivator, but it's the sort of the newer equipment in their ranges that's out. Very nice indeed. Which moves on to the next of the cultivators in the seed bed preparation. And it's this one here. This is the Cavernland Turbo 8000T. 
This will use 11 slots. My lead engine running now. Again, nicely detailed. This is just a larger version of that. It has the same sections. As you can see, with the packer rolls at the back, double road packer rollers on this <coughs> for breaking up larger clumps and all that kind of thing. That's exactly what it should do. This you will also find under cultivators. It was right next to the other one. You probably saw it a minute ago. There you go, 79,950. This is a 7.7 .7 meter. This will require 400 horsepower to pull, so it requires a fair old bit. There are no options available. You get what you get. I think this has got 435, has it, this one? I hope so. So I say, much bigger version. Double sets of hydraulics to lift that whole rig up. There we go. Cultivates out to 7.7 .7 metres. Let's fold it back up. And disconnect. Right, moving on to the next piece of equipment we're going to look at. This is cool. This is the first of my kind of, or um, not my, I didn't make it, but the surprise packages here. This was another one you look at and go, mm, okay, we have already got these. I know we've already got these, but this is why I like this. Um, this is the Covernant Exactor TLX Geo Spread. This will use 10 slots. This is a rear mounted fertilizer spreader. So, this will do your white fertilizer pellets and it will spread them. Wonderful, I hear you say. We do have quite a lot of those. We do. But if you look up on the top left hand corner at the uh, help menu, We've got turn on fertilizer spreader, open cover, which we can do, like so, when we load or unload it. This will do 3,900 litres, so a nice size capacity as well. I like that, it's a good capacity on it. It then says change work width. Hmm. That's something a bit different. We can lower our fertilizer for dropping off and the rest of it, but changing the work width, well. Let's have a look at that option, shall we? That's what makes this one stand out. It's what's going to make me pick it quite a lot, I would imagine. Um, so, L1 and triangle. At the moment, it says current working width 24 metres. That's generally speaking what they run out to. Some are about 18, some are 24 in game. If we've got one that runs out of 36, I don't think we have, I'm not sure. So, 24, 28, 32, 36, nice, 40. 45 meters 45 that's right <laughs> turn it on look at that that is madness an absolutely fantastic you are going to cover your fields in absolutely no time running out of 45 meters but the great thing is, if you've only got a small strip to do, because what you'll often find, if you've got one that runs out to 36 or wherever it might be, um, or 24 or whatever it is, um, if you've gone across your field and you find you've only got a small section left to do, you don't want to be running out at 45 metres, wasting all that fertiliser. So if you get to that point, and the great thing is you don't go back into the workshop to change it, we just go bump back to 24, do a small strip, or if it's a little bit bigger, we go up a couple and do it at 32. Or well, that's brilliant. That is such a clever idea, such a clever design. I like this one a lot. Very, very cool. So, let's drop that down. And disconnect. You will find this under fertiliser technology. Now, like I said before, we've got a few of these. There's the Kunaxis, there's a whole load of modded ones. Um... But they're they're all generally speaking set. There might be a odd modded one where you've got the option to change it. Um, some will do fertilizer and lime. This one here only does fertilizer. It's not a fertilizer and lime spreader. That might be one thing that might put you off from doing it. But twenty four thousand five hundred for nearly a four thousand litre capacity with that ability to switch out your your size i think that's fantastic and the thing is when you look in the menu here it says 24 meters 
if you if you just go along by the menu here, you you're not going to pick it. You you might you might look and think, okay, it's not a bad size capacity. It doesn't lie man fertilize, and it goes out to 24 four meters. We've got plenty of those that do that already. I won't bother. That's why that trick up its sleeve is absolutely worth every penny. Um, there are no options available. You get what you get. And this will use 10 slots for the first one you buy. I think that is a must-have. That's just absolutely fantastic. Right, moving on to the next of our field prep pieces of equipment. I say pieces, we've got two here we're going to kind of look at together. Also part of the eye range. We've got the Cavernland I Extra 1100 Comfort front tank, which is this one here. We're going to hook up to now. I have already put liquid fertiliser, 1100, because it's 1100 litres in it. And then behind us, we have got the Cavernland I Extra B18 Boom Sprayer. This is a three point link mounted boom sprayer. Let's do the animation on that first. We'll fold that back up. Now, a couple of things about this, again, that I really, really like. Um, the lights on the front of this are great, and that's, that's nothing new. We've got quite a few front-mounted tanks now that have got lights, but these lights are bright and powerful. Because obviously, as soon as you put one of these on the front, you're blocking the lights on your tractor. Um, absolutely fantastic. Nice touch on that. Nicely designed, ergonomic, and all the rest of it. Very cool indeed. But, here's the other cool thing, this is something we got on FS19 when it came out, was certain cedar combinations that when you hooked up the cedar front tank to the cedar at the rear, you would get the pipework that would run across. That's no exception to this pack, but sprayers are a whole different ball game. And if you put your sprayer on the front and that on the back, there's always been that kind of, okay, fine, what, how does it move like through another dimensional? Well, this is so cool. Let's see if I can get down to it. Oh. No, not that one. Underneath here, on this pack, we've got tubes, pipes, that run underneath the tractor that hook this together. It's a small thing, it's a little feature, but they run right underneath there, and then come out the back. Let's get a light on here. See them under there? <laughs> so cool. Like I say, it's a, it's a small thing, simple things and that kind of thing, but I think that's a brilliant feature. That's so cool. Just a nice, another one of those additional things to put in. Um, it, it probably didn't have to be put in, like a lot of things, but um, it is. So we're going to look at these together. So that's the front tank, and then we've got the rear IX to B18 sprayer. Um, these will do uh, fertiliser or herbicide. They are a spraying system. So you can do either of those. If you are running weeds, you can do that. So you'll find these under crop protection. Um, kind of still part of the field prep if you're going to be spraying or anything before you put stuff in the ground. But it's all part of the field, you know, looking after your field. So that's why I put it in this video. Um, we're no stranger to front and rear tank sit setups and situations. That's nothing new, but this is the new version of it. So we've got the iExtra 1100 Comfort front tank. That's 19 slots, which is fairly high. <coughs> and the iExtra B18 uh, is 23 slots. I think because the pipe hookup and that kind of thing is probably why that's a little bit higher. Um, yeah, it does seem fairly high. There are no options available. You get what you get. Um, and it will do, uh, like I said, it will do fertiliser and herbicide. Not obviously at the same time. Or oh, I say... Fertiliser or herbicide, whichever. Um, and then the IX to B18, um, 1,800 litre tank. Um, now, this one we do have some options on. We can start at 18 metres. So if you're starting out on your farm, you haven't got big equipment, big stuff, big fields, whatever it might be, um, you can buy that. Because, again, why buy a massive boom if you don't need a massive boom? But the great thing with this is you can then extend it out 24 metres, 28 metres, and then back to 18. So you've got three different options on the boom size there, which is quite nice, I think. I went with the 28, didn't I? Yeah, probably the 28. Sounds like the sort of thing I'd do. Um, 41 grand if you go for the 28 metre, 35 grand for the 24 metre, 26,500 for the 18 metre. So, I mean, it does what you'd expect it to do. 
problem is I've covered most of the field already, but we'll, we'll still show it opening and closing and whatnot. As a lot of the boom sprayers, once opened, we do have the option to L1 and right stick, we can raise and lower the boom. So depending on what crop you're going over, you want to add that little bit of extra realism to it, you will add that in. Um, what we've also got is the lights, like I said, in the front, the lights on there are really nice. Gives a nice bit of illumination in the front. Some of them are kind of there, not for show, but um, they're not quite as bright, I don't think personally, as those ones. That's my own personal feeling on the matter. And then out we would go. Now, what I need to check, because I don't think it does. Oh, I'm gutted. Is I'm pretty sure in the real world, because I had a look online at this, oh, I was really hoping that was going to be in here. I d when I got clicked this on earlier and set it all up ready to go, I forgot to check. And now I'm checking and it's not. Ah. In the real world, with these, you can actually have one boom out and one boom in. So you can fold one boom away. So if you're running along the edge of a field, um, on the track or something like that, you don't have to have both booms extended. I was hoping that was going to be the case. But there's not another option for boom control other than the up and down. Oh well. Is what it is. We can raise and lower the whole situation. Um, so for dropping it off and that kind of thing. But there you go, so that will spray out from 18 to 28 metres. Uh, like I say, I do like the pipe work underneath, that's really cool. Generally speaking, the front tanks and rear tanks are interchangeable. So if you've got a front tank from another system, they will work, of course they will, but you won't necessarily get the um, the pipe hookup that you get on this one. So, there we go, that's those two. Moving on to the last of our, like I say, kind of field prep, field you know, maintenance, whatever you want to look at it is this and this is the trailed sprayer the Cavernant i extract t4 look up to that swap that away very cool nice ergonomic design again We've, we, this is not new, we've got this in game already we've got various different ones and there are modded versions of these as well um, this is just the Kvernand version um, something I did want to check actually that's right what I didn't want to do was um, miss there being you know, I thought maybe some of those if you hook them up you might get an extra screen or something or something comes up in cab that I wasn't expecting to because it's the eye range maybe they've done something like that as well but I, I don't think they have I just thought better have a look just in case so this is where you find under crop protection and like I say we've got the navigator we've got the uh, the metris there's a few of these trail ones that's yeah. uh, I'm just thinking what's capacity is that 6,000 4,380 this one is a 4,600 litre tank. This will use 26 slots. It will do herbicide or fertil liquid fertiliser. Um, again, we've got options on this, which I, again, I like the fact you've got a 4,600 litre tank. If you couple that with the front tank as well, which you can do if you want to, um, you're going to ext extend your uh, range. But you can also have this 18 metres, you can have it 24 metres, 28 metres, 32 metres, 36 metres, and 40 meters that's pretty cool i'm pretty sure a lot of the other ones only go up to 36 um so that's a nice addition to have as well and the ability to go through up through all of those different ranges and sizes we also have the option to have narrow tires if you are going on doing spray and you've got crop protection on and you're doing uh, weed killing or you're doing fertilizing after the crop's grown um you can have any narrows on and then we've got standards if you want to go down that route too so very nice indeed what we do have with a lot of these we've got rear steer so that rear axle does turn which aids in turning circles stops you dragging tires around and scrubbing them and that kind of thing 
Um, but with the other one, I think I went... Did I have the fault on this? I might have done. It's a huge boom. <laughs> it's absolutely massive. But again, pretty cool if you're going to be doing big fields. You can raise and lower. Like so. Sometimes you might want to raise and lower. Um, if you come into a, a slight gradient and that kind of thing. Now I don't think we've got control of this. Um, just trying to think. No. Again, we haven't got side to side change. Um, we haven't got a one side fold or anything like that. Um, but it is what it is. What I'm going to do though, because I'm curious whether or not if these are part of the same range, if I hook up the front tank to this, um, will we get the pipes hook up underneath as well to this? I don't know if we will, but it's worth a look. We don't. So the pipes only attach when you do the front tank with the smaller B18 sprayer. But it's worth a look. But that does, like I say now, that does increase the capacity out now, although I've used a little bit, but 5,663. Um, so you're looking at probably 5,700 litres combined, which is a nice amount of spray to have in there, especially if you're running out to 40 metres. Um, but there you go. So that's part one. That's field prep. Um, in part two, we're going to be having a look at seeders and planters. So that's coming up next. I hope you join me for the next part. We'll have a look at that and see if we've got any surprises and cool stuff to be looking at. I know we do have a range of them going up in sizes as well, so it's not all just one set size. We've got a few different sizes coming up. Um, but there you go. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.